let's take a look at a specific example of a matrix times a vector. Here I have this matrix A, and I'm going to note that this matrix is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix, so two different rows and three columns. And then I can think of this as multiplying some vector x, and maybe you'll know that this, this vector x is sort of like a 3 by 1 matrix. It's a matrix with three different rows and, and one column. And I note that I have this 3 in the middle of the 2 that is, that is sort of matching. Now, this property that the sort of two inner numbers matched is critical. Matrix multiplication doesn't even make sense if this property is not true. To see this, let's go back to the content of the previous video. When we define the idea of a matrix times a vector, it was all based out of this notion of a linear combination, where you took the sum of some scalar times a first vector all the way down to a scalar times the nth vector. Now, what's critical here is that we have a, a matching of the n there and the n there. In other words, the, the way this, this a times x works is it took the, the first column of the matrix A, that was this a1, and it multiplied it to the first scalar x1. It went all the way down to the nth column of the matrix A, that was the an multiplied by the scalar xn. So you, you need to have the same number of scalars as you do columns of your matrix. And so looking back to our specific example, that's exactly what we have. The number of scalars is the three, the number two, the number one, and the number three. It's these three different components of the vector x. And there's three different columns of this matrix A, and so everything is going to be compatible. So let's see how we can actually compute this. If I write it out in terms of a linear combination, the way it works is the first component, that's 2, is multiplied by the first column, that's 2, 1. Then the second component, 1, is multiplied by the second column, that's 3, 2. And then the third component, that's the 3, is multiplied by the third column, 0, minus 1. And if I add up this vector equation, I can see I've got in the first component a 4, a 3, and a 0 that looks like a 7, and then in the bottom components a 2 times 1 is 2, a 1 times 2 is another 2, so 4, and then I subtract off a 3 and that gives me a value of 1. Now you're welcome to do this every single time if you wish to, to rewrite, rewrite a times x as just the linear combination of the columns of the matrix A by these coefficients that come from x. You can do that and you can compute it out and it's fairly straightforward. But you're going to be doing it so many times in this course that we may as well figure out an efficient way to sort of do it almost in our heads. So the way I like to think about it is that I'm going along the first row of my matrix A and I'm going down this column in the matrix B. And, and what I'm doing is sort of three different pairs of numbers. I'm going to multiply the first two components together. So that's the two and the two. And then I'm going to multiply the second components together. So that's the three and the one. And then I'm going to multiply the third components together. So that's the zero and the three. And we see this manifest in the equation as the two times the two is, is that pairing there. And the th one times the three is that pairing there. And the zero times the three is that pairing there. So I can do this relatively quickly in my head. I can just sort of say, look, 2 times 2, that's 4. And then I'm going to go to 3 times 1, that gives me to a 7. And then 0 times 3, that doesn't add anything. I'm still at 7. I can also do the same basic idea by going along the bottom row and then this column as well. And I'm going to say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to connect the first two components and then the second two components and then the third two components, and I'm going to get something along the lines of, look, I've got 1 times 2, and then 2 times 1, and then minus 1 times 3, so that was 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, and that gave me this 1 down here. So if you wish, you can do this relatively quickly in your head, or you can do it a little bit more slowly and carefully by writing out the full linear combination. I don't mind which.